What's that, you ask? <laughs> All kidding aside, it's a pergola. I'm sweating. It's so hot out here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I do appreciate you being here. And if you haven't subscribed, where's the camera? If you haven't subscribed, um, please do so. There's really no reason why you shouldn't be subscribed right now. Please subscribe. Okay. For those of you who haven't, um, why not? Why haven't you subscribed? There's literally no reason why you haven't subscribed yet. Please subscribe. Okay. I've asked nicely, actually. And I'm not going to do it again. So please subscribe and subscribe. Um, absolutely subscribe because I know that's what you want to do. Like the video and subscribe. So, uh, the pergola, yes. I'm going to do a little voiceover action to kind of show you what I went through with this project. But um, it was a doozy. Let's just say that, a doozy. It was challenging. Um, it was fun. But it was hot and it was windy and it rained and... The stain and the 20 foot boards and, but it's done and it looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. So enjoy this video and uh, stick around and then um, absolutely subscribe because I know that's what you want to do. Like the video and subscribe. So thank you. Bye. Okay, let's do this. Let's talk about this pergola. Um, here you can see the, the ground is marked in spray paint for what I want to have removed. My neighbor came over with his bobcat and took out six inches of uh, the grass and, and dirt beneath it to create the base for what will eventually be the pool going in underneath the pergola. The lumber was a bit challenging. It took me three lumber yards to finally get all of the materials that I needed for this project. A 20 foot boards are a little bit difficult, but in the end I had two by eight, two by six, and two by fours uh, that were 20 feet long, as well as six by six posts that were 16 feet long. different measurements that I took during this process to get my holes in alignment to one another so that the post could ultimately be 18 feet spaced apart. So the posts are set into the ground here and they're braced up while the cement is drying. The decorative beam edges were traced out onto a sheet of cardboard and I just tried a couple of different designs until I found something that I was happy with and then cut it out and used that as a template to trace onto all of the remaining beams and same process for the rafters. The, the rafter tails are actually a little bit different than the beam tails and I think that just adds a nice cosmetic touch to the pergola. And then for the two by four slats on the very top, um, I just cut a 45 degree angle about an inch and a quarter down from the top. The stain that we chose is a stain and sealant all in one, and it's a pretty close match to the pressure treated posts. The posts are actually notched on either side to receive the two by eight beams. The notch is about five eighths of an inch in, and it creates a pocket for the two by eight beam to sit into, and then ultimately they're bolted into place. The two by six rafters are notched on the bottom portion of the board to sit down on top of the two by eight beams beneath them. And the 
upper layer includes 23 2x4 slats that were toenail screwed into the 2x6s beneath them. This pergola includes three layers. The beams are two by eight boards, the rafters are two by six boards, and the slats are two by four boards. The post caps consist of just some scrap material that I had laying around. Some two by eight boards that I cut into squares and put a 45 degree chamfer on all of the edges. And you can see I have to chisel away some of the post and then the cap sits on top of that with four four inch screws. To create the brackets, I used some reclaimed 2x8 boards that I planed down to give a nice surface to work with and created a template out of cardboard. Um, once I was happy with the template, then I traced that onto the boards and used an angle grinder to hog out the majority of the material and then later an orbital sander to remove the material down to the template line and the rest of the cuts were made with a jigsaw. You can purchase black hardware and make your projects look a little bit nicer, but I chose to go the cheaper route and get just normal hardware and plasti dip them so that they were black in the end. And you know, it's a little bit more time. However, it's a, it's a great savings if you don't want to spend a lot of money on, on just regular hardware, you can plasti dip it. And so the process for that is to mask everything off um, and then leave your, yourself a little bit of, of area to pull up the unwanted plasti dip once everything is dry. That's the end of it. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so many blonde hairs. I know kids' hair can change when they're young, but this is ridiculous. This late in the game? I mean, I'm only 26.